Okay, here we go. Here this morning, thought I'd try and, uh, I haven't even taken a single strike this morning. I got a piece of Georgetown here. Uh, it's a pretty long piece. Uh, I like to make a long biface. Eventually I am going to start making some finish points, but with my time schedule right now, I just don't have the time to sit down and nap for an extended period of time. So I've just been playing with these bifaces and trying to get, <coughs> excuse me, trying to get uh, used to this camera or different positions, trying to figure out where, where it needs to be. I can see in the camera that if I get too far out this way, I'm going to be off of the off of things so hopefully it's going to be in frame i have a tendency to hold the piece up like this and look at it so i can see it uh wear glasses i don't see that great but anyways uh hold it up here and i was looking at a test video yesterday and i i was completely off the frame when i was doing that so playing with a little different uh camera position anyways but let's see what kind of link that we got to start with here it's almost it's right at 12 inches so i don't know how much of this we'll be able to preserve i'll try to preserve as much as i can it's a fairly thick tab um you know about two inches two inches is a lot of width to shrink up when you're this narrow at the top so it is for me anyway so we may we may lose some of that but uh I'm gonna not use my brace on my right hand again. It, I can just hit a lot better without that. We'll just get into this thing and figure out how to save as much of it. It's got a good ring to it, so it is solid. So. starting out a little bit rough there we go now we're starting to get our zigzag going here just doing that so I can get into this side because it is two inches thick you know and basically a square edge it does have a little bit of an angle I could run some flakes straight off right here so I may end up doing that head again I'm just trying to get used to that camera being in that position and it isn't exactly easy let's try a little bit smaller buffer here all right took that little corner off that gives you a platform here to come back down this other way you can see how that is angled there and that allows me to come back this way try to run a flake cross here thinning out this base try not to lose too much of it um, I am going to lose some of this length up here it's probably going to look something more like this here but we'll see 
there's a another arrowhead flake and that did come across this base thinned it out quite a bit I haven't worked too many pieces this long. Um, it's kind of a practice piece for another piece I've got saved, which I won't do for a while. I'm gonna get a little more experience before I do it, but see if I can reach that. Come here. This piece right here. I don't know how much that you can see. This is a big old piece. About 15, about 15 inches long, eight, eight and a half inches wide. And this piece has got a, you hold it right, I can't do it sitting on my lap, but you can hear that ring, it's solid. And my vision for this isn't anything super thin, but, um, you know, get me a, like to make a big old wide point out of this. They're like a, I don't know what they call it, a dance blade or something like that. But, uh, we get a big 14 inch long Georgetown blade. I don't even care if it's super thin, but, you know, if I could just make a really nice big blade to put in my display, that would be, that'd be awesome. But I'm afraid to start hitting on this one yet. And uh, honestly, I'm debating on whether or not to do that or saving this piece. And uh, next time I run into Jim Redfern at the nap in, I might have him make it and sign it and add it to my collection. But we'll see about all that. But I've got a couple tabs like this that I can use. This is probably the best one. But anyhow, that's part of the thing with this piece here which was kind of an awkward piece because it's so narrow up here at the top it's thick but narrow at the top so we'll see here got to keep my head from hitting the camera It's a really thick edge. Yeah, we lost some length there for sure. But I gotta be able to get in here and attack this edge somehow or another.
Okay. I still got a square edge. We're still, everything's still shifted to this side at the moment. If it is, it's, it's gone now. That just pulled that right out of there. I still got a square edge at the base here, which I'm going to have to eventually get rid of. But I want to get rid of this big old clunk right here without knocking the whole end off. But, uh, trying to do that. Okay, so we got some of that thickness off the tip. That is sure some pretty material, boy. I'll tell you what. This load of Georgetown I picked up is actually some of the some of the best that I've. Had. Okay. Gotta get rid of this square. Sometimes when I'm having a hard time getting into these. I'm sure if I had more experience I could just bop 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 and there it'd be. But trying to slow down some and Getting somewhere now. kind of goofy there. I'm not sure why that is. shaping up so far I may uh, end up with far less than what I wanted like maybe something in here but, uh, if I snap in half it be far less than that I'm trying to use some of this width here to run some thinning flakes in Try not to pull this side in, this side in too much, because then I'm going to lose a lot of length. But it's so thick to begin with that I may not have any choice. Got a 
bit of a mess going on here at the base. Probably gonna have to clean some of that up. We're uneven here, so um, that is going to have to shape up and this video will probably never be uploaded. Trying to play with the camera angle and does have a little bit of crack that goes in right there. I believe we can get under it. It's just a little incipient crack there, it don't go. deep just little light strikes on the end there I uh well, I need to move some off this edge over here. But this edge is way too low. So. We'll move it. Move it down a little bit. See if we can get a... It's probably still going to be... Slightly above center, but we're going to see if we can get a flake to come off of it. We did. Now that's got a spot there that I'm not sure that's going to allow a flake to go. Probably wasn't. But, uh... It went through it just to clean that up a little bit. We still got all kinds of thickness on this tip. I've let that tip go way too far. It's real heavy sticking out there, so <laughs> hopefully I don't snap it. Guess that, I guess. I suppose. All right, well, we're going to bring this side in. By bringing this side in, it's going to save as much of this length as, as the can that I got left. I knew that piece was going to be, I hit my head on the camera again, I knew that piece was going to be kind of awkward, 
because it got so narrow at the tip and it was so thick I didn't know if I was going to be able to thin it out and at my skill level I wasn't able to do it but uh, that's part of the reason for these videos I found that I'd videoed one and I thought you know be able to look at that and review it I uh learned a lot from watching myself nap and uh, that's part of how this video one started was just I just wanted to video myself to be able to review it and see if I could see things I was doing wrong and uh, Believe me, there's plenty of those. <laughs> but anyways. We ended up with a biface. Not as long as it was. But, uh, and I'll make a little biface out of this piece also. Almost split it in half. But It'll make a couple points. And I, we got the skimming flakes, and I got some down here on the ground. Uh, that piece starting out was, that was a six pound rock. And uh, just a little on, a couple ounces under. But we got a biface here. I can clean it up some more. Probably not going to though. I just call it good there. Relatively thin. But we got that one. <coughs> Let's see. Let's see if we can get a biface out of this. This thing is clunky, man. <laughs> I mean, thick and narrow, which is generally my nemesis. If I just do it and don't think about it too much, then I can probably get it. How much of a buy face to be. I just ordered some new abrading stones. I really like these coarse 20 something grit abrading stones. I like them to be bigger than this. Okay. Switch down the bopper size a little bit there. And we have successfully made a little biface out of this. I played around with the camera and did a little pressure flaking, trying to see where my close-up shot needed to be. And uh, it was okay. We'll see. It was too terrible. When I get to doing that, I won't. Sound like someone might be here. Or they could just be barking at whatever. Sorry about the dog barking. That's going to happen here. I've said on other videos we have 10 dogs. 
none of them are on a chain, none of them are on in pins. They run run through here on the ranch. And uh, we got so many dogs that when we go to the vet, we got to take a stock trailer. And the vet always gets a kick out of that. That could be because we're sending another one of his kids to college. <laughs> I don't know. I'm friends with my vet. Friends outside the office. He's a good guy. Do a lot of leather work business with him. Do a lot of trading. Um, he likes leather stuff and, and uh, I have a lot of vet bills, so <laughs> it works out. As you can imagine. All right, I'm gonna leave it at that. Talking and jabbering and the rest of that'll get done with indirect. Now let's look at these right here these are those thin flakes so you can see how thin that is got a pretty good sized ball percussion right here and I still don't have a new cap Hitting this camera with my head. Got a big head. Anyways, alright, we won't use all the copper boxes. I still don't have a new thing on it, so I'm not sure how this will work. It's been a while since I've used a holocopter bopper. Probably have to get a little bit used to it here. Get over some of these. If I don't keep them organized a little bit, then I'm always chasing them. Some of that cortex back. I can't make a big flake, a big uh, pie face, or point out of this, but it will make a nice little point. Or my face. I usually don't have time to finish these, but I enjoy making them. I was at a nap in not long ago, a private nap in, and there were some young boys there went napping. I'm not sure how old they were. They weren't very old. I think the one boy was about 11 or so, somewhere in there. 
10 or 11. That one was a little bit younger. Brothers. A couple of the most well behaved kids I've ever met. Um, their uncle had brought them. Which, uh, he's got a pretty good relationship with his nephews, which is pretty cool. You don't always see that with uncles. Um, my kids were pretty blessed to have uh, their uncle Brian. He's a good guy. My kids are we're really close with him, still are, and their aunt. So. When I was growing up, we were lived quite a ways from our family, so I didn't have as much as much interaction with my aunts and uncles. We'll probably just leave that like that. It's awful thin. Not sure I can get all that cortex off here, but we'll see. Brought it in quite a ways. I'm not sure what it is about these hollow copper boppers, but whatever the whatever the science is behind it, when you're using these, you kind of you use a smaller one than what you would think. And the bigger one stops moving flakes, you just move to a smaller one and all of a sudden they start moving again. And all they are is just a copper cap, uh, plumbing cap, water line cap, um, and it's just stuck on a piece of PV, just hollow PVC with some tape. It looks terrible. <laughs> <coughs> they don't look fantastic, but sure enough work. Installed a little bitty crack right there. Pretty much gone. Anyways, that's about all we're going to do to that one. We got it pretty thin. Most of the cortex is off. Just a little film of it. But, uh, there's my little biface. Here's one. It's got a pretty good ball percussion. It is thin down here. We'll see if we can make anything out of this one. When I'm hitting down like this, you would think, well, he won't, you need to, don't seem to make any sense there because uh, the edge is already this, as far this way as it can come. But the outside edge of this is just all cortex. So I'm trying to knock that off and bring it back in the position so I can come back this way, if that makes any sense. So when you see me doing this and I'm, the edge is already as high up as it can go and I'm hitting down that's the reason because uh, when I'm doing these flakes it's got this cortex on here and I'm just trying to get rid of the cortex and so get back to an edge to run some flakes across this side to get rid of it and you can see I hope you can see you can see how thin that flint is underneath that cortex and we're gonna try and save that and uh, whether or not I can or not, I don't know, but there's an arrowhead in this piece. I just uh, got to talk it out of it.
like to say, you just remove everything that don't look like an arrowhead. Got a ton of stuff to do in the shop today. Usually what I do is I, uh, in the leather shop, is I'll have a day where I'll just assemble, tool and assemble uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Maybe, you know, 10 orders at a time. Sometimes more than that. Usually don't try and try, try and go too much more than that because there's only so much I can get done in a day. Uh, and that's varying. It, it'll be everything from, uh, let's see, what do I got in there today? I don't know if I can remember or not, but I've got a uh, uh, couple rifle slings, maybe a belt. Um, I know I've got three or four knife sheaths and these aren't these aren't just single layer cheapo slap it together knife sheaths either these are really really nice sheaths that take uh, take some extra time these are these are lifetime sheaths so they're built to they're built to last I say lifetime sheaths, but uh, of course I'd have to live a lifetime to know that for sure, but I got nice sheaths I've been carrying for 15 years that I built, and uh, they're still just as good as the day I bought them. I don't know if I could ever wear them out. That bulb of percussion on the end. Nervous about whacking on that thing. Snapping it. Still got a square edge along this side. of it and the piece is getting it's getting flatter how much of it's going to be left when I'm done here but it is getting narrow I gotta lose some of this tip Whatever I'm making, I mean, I could make the base down here, but it's already so narrow. I mean, that wide part right there is probably an inch and a half or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't inch and three quarter three and a half really thin not putting any pressure I'm holding it on both sides and I got my finger on the base here No pressure in the middle. So if I put pressure in the middle, you hold like that and hit on there, it's going to snap right where your thumb's at. Every time. And I'm trying to... Trying not to snap. Obviously. There it went. There it went because of where I had my, I just a little bit of pressure there in the wrong spot and snapped it. But that's how it goes. 
I do have a little piece of root beer here. Let's, uh, let's see what we can do with it real quick. And then I gotta get busy in the loader shop. This is a raw piece. Let's see what we start out with here. It's kind of a, it's got a large bulb of percussion on this end. You see it's pretty thick. A little caddy wampus, we'll have to bring some flakes in here. We'll probably straighten out this side, get this side straightened out some, and then we'll come back and work on the other side because the way this is concaved here, I'm not sure if you can see that I want to bring take some off this side to bring this up level with that and that's going to flatten out this bottom side pretty much can't remember what Flint and Abbey place I ordered them things from they're generally uh, grinders from they're used Generally pretty fast about getting them out, use a ship right away. But uh, I always wait till I, I'm done, wore them all in half. I, I wear them in half. I need to work on grinding with the ends more than the center, but it's just habit. And so I burn through them, and by the time they get halfway thin, then uh, they snap in half. Kind of like a bull in a china closet with those. But we're going to hit right here. It just takes short flakes off and flatten out that bottom some. And it's pretty flat on the bottom. We've got a Got a ridge running right here, and uh, it's below center line, so I don't know how far that'll go. Might raise it just a hair. And then I'm going to smack that and try and run some of that off. We're going to go with a little bigger bopper. That's what happened. And, uh, I don't know where all this was like that there so you can see where that flake come across and uh, obviously ran past halfway, which is which is what you're trying to do if you're not running past halfway, you're not thinning it and I seemed I couldn't get that through my thick skull when I started of course, I didn't know how to run them past halfway, and there, that created another ridge right here. So I'm going to grind this, and I'm going to hit right here. Try and run that ridge again. Ugh, I messed that up. Caused an undetached flake. But we ran it across there. hitting this way trying to get that to come off unsuccessfully I think I think I may be able to bring something across right here and if I can that'll help tremendously Now that flake came in here and it spread out. You can see that it spread out. And it kind of followed, tried to follow this ridge and it come up across this way. And uh, I took a bunch of that out. I'm gonna grind this. 
I'm gonna hit right here and try and try and come across right here. I'm not sure. Knock that little ridge down. Hopefully that'll help it travel across there. Now I've got sporting it on the back. I've got it against my leg here. And I crushed it. <laughs> I think it's gonna like this lighter bopper. Not every strike works out, especially for me. See, that lighter bopper just switched tools and it liked it. And we're getting pretty flat now. Those flakes took out a lot without losing a tremendous amount of the edge. Now that's got a step right there. Um, I'll have to take this back some, uh, hit down right here to bring this up so we can get rid of that little piece right there, if you can see that. Because if I hit that right there, it's probably going to stop right there. So by taking this down some, it brings it up to the same level, and it should run across that. Okay, don't want to come off there. So, if you can see this, we brought this bottom up by hitting down. We brought it up, and it's right here on this. That should travel that ridge now. I'm going to hit it like this and try and travel across here to clean that up. And it'll either work or it won't. If it doesn't, we'll just recover from it and move on. Hit in a little deeper than I wanted to, but it did come across there, and uh, we're looking pretty good at the moment. I may come from this tip right there. That ran a little flake across there to help straighten that up without losing a lot of the length. Same thing again. I might hit down on this edge here, take some off right there. So that, you can see where that hit and took that out. I'll probably run some short flakes right here. That'll also bring this up and I'll be able to, once this edge is up, I'll be able to take the last part of this tip off. down to a bopper that I can fit in there. step right there that's going to blow off there and ain't going to make any difference we are in a biface stage but i'm going to thin it out a little bit you see how flat we are across this bottom part We got some convexity going over the top. Might be able to get one more short flake right there. It didn't like that at all. It's too flat on that side. But it's wider than it needs to be, so. We were taking all those other flakes from this side. This side's thinner than this side. I'm going to bring this side up a little bit, run some flakes across, and we're going to call this one done.
be moved on to the next stage. Let's see if we can take one right here. We did. Perfect. Now that's at center line or just a little below it actually. I don't know if I can. That's irritating me. Pop it off there. Try to. I'm taking some of that off, knocking it down some. It'll make it easier for that to remove. So it can't cause me any problems later. Because it's trying to turn into a I grind that. Let's see if we can pop that off there. She's gone. I hate looking at things like that. <laughs> Alright, so I still want to take some flakes off this side to thin that out. I'm not sure that I got enough. Bring that edge up just a tiny bit more. Okay, we might be center or slightly, slightly above. I set myself up for a series of flakes. I come off there and that thinned it down substantially. Got this little goofy spot right here, which is, I don't like. This whole side's got to move in. It's not an even biface. Move that over some. Now we'll try and knock that off there. This root beer is a lot like that hornstone where it's you get some of these pieces, it's nice stuff, high grade stuff that's super easy to chip and you just can't smack it as hard, which is, for whatever reason, it's hard for me to do to not want to just knock, knock the tar out of it. So I don't remember what we started with. I guess I should probably start committing that to memory. Um, I'm going to leave it like that. It's relatively thin. And it's a uh, four and an eighth to a little over two and a half. Like I said, I don't remember exactly what we started with. There's our Georgetown. Kind of a disappointment. <laughs> on this one but uh we started with such a long piece but we did manage to save some pieces <coughs> see the kind of length we got here five and three quarter four inches wide you can run flakes across this piece this is a nice piece three quarters away easy probably all the way across so if you want to make some sort of big wide point which would be kind of cool um, this was two and a two and three quarters, just about. That one's three and a half. And uh, the root beer one, like I said, was four and an eight. Anyways, this was just a test video. It's probably never going to make it on the on the channel, but we'll see. Just practicing here, trying to get 
trying to keep things in frame and see how things go. But uh, y'all have a great day.